My beloved, today's topic is appendicitis. Uh, take your pants, papers, who make the nose, like me. Huh? So making the nose is absolutely necessary for your memory. Not just re-watching this video, it's okay. It's great to you. I know that you are re-watching my videos, very good. But essential, crucial is making the nose. So you open your exam tickets, of course appendicitis, you will find in exam questions, board questions of surgery, and you find appendicitis. So what is appendicitis? Always start with definition. Why? So appendicitis is an acute, an acute inflammation of the appendix, a small finger-shaped pouch attached to the secum at the beginning of the large intestine, if we remember anatomy, of course. It's a common surgical emergency, particularly in young adults, and requires prompt diagnosis and prevent, and treatment actually, to prevent serious complications. So etiology, that it means causes of appendicitis. So the exact cause of appendicitis is a good question. It's not clear at all but it's most commonly associated with the obstruction of the appendiceal lumen. Lumen is opening. Some factors may cause obstruction of this obstruction of the lumen. For example, feculis, that is hardened stool, which broke the opening of the appendix. Lymphoid hyperplasia, that is lympho increased lymph lymphoid tissue due to infections. I don't know, viral, bacterial, par parasitic, actually parasitic, good question. Foreign bodies that become lodged in the appendix. No tumors or neoplasms. Uh, Helminitic infection, for example, worms such as Ascaris. Inflammation of gastrointestinal tracts, Crohn disease. Crohn disease, no. Uh. Anyway, if you answer that the etiology of uh, appendicitis is not clear, it will be okay. So when the lumen of the appendix is obstructed, the secretion inside accumulate, causing increased pressure, reduced blood flow, bacterial overgrowth, and eventually inflammation. If untreated, the appendix can become necrotic, leading to perforation. Symptoms and signs of the problem. The clinical presentation of appendicitis can vary, but typically, typically includes abdominal pain. Abdominal pain, of course. Resembling acute abdomen, why not? So the pain often starts as vague discomfort around the periumbical region and later shifts to the right, lower right, lower quadrant, RLQ, uh, right lower quadrant, at McBurney's point. Actually, McBurney's point, very common question in your exams. Huh? So, McBurney point, one third of the way from the anterior superior leg, spine to the umbilicus. Nausea and vomiting often follow the onset of pain. Nausea and vomiting. Anorexia means low, ap low appetite is very common. Low-grade fever. Mild fever may develop, but high fever is uncommon, unless, of course, perforated has occurred. Rebound tenderness. Rebound tenderness. So, pain felt upon release of pressure in the right lower quadrant. Rosing signs. Rosing signs. Oh, another question in exams. Huh? Pain in the uh, right lower quadrant when palpating the left lower quadrant. So, rosing sign. Pain in the right, uh, right lower quadrant, whereas when you palpate the left lower quadrant. What else? Psoas sign. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pain with the extension of the right hip, indicating irritation of the psoas muscle. So pain with extension of the right hip indicating irritation of the psoas muscle. 
Obturator sign, pain with the internal rotation of the right hip, suggesting pelvic appendicitis. And guarding and rigidity, my beloveds, in advanced cases, patients may have involuntary muscle contraction over the abdomen due to peritonitis. Due to peritonitis. Peritonitis. So diagnosis of appendicitis. The diagnosis of, the app of appendicitis is primarily clinical but can be confirmed with laboratory intermaging studies. Clinical examination based on the history and physical exam findings such as right lower quadrant, tenderness and specific signs. Once again, Rosing signs, PSOAS, obturator sign. Laboratory test, complete blood count, leukocyte, leukocytosis with a left sheet, left shift, increased neutrophils is often seen. C-reactive protein may be elevated, indicating inflammation. Imaging, ultrasound, now we use it, uh, though quite common, useful especially in children and pregnant women. It may show an enlarged, non-compressible, non-compressible appendix. Computer tomography scan, considered the gold standard for diagnosis, with high sensitivity and specificity. Specificity. It can reveal an enlarged appendix, periappendiceal inflammation, and possible perforation. MRI so can be used when radiation exposure must be minimized, for example, in pregnancy. MRI, why not? No, actually. So, about classification. So, what do we have? We have a chronic and acute one. Acute appendicitis. Simple and complicated. Simple. Non-perforative means inflammation is limited to the appendix. Complicated, that is perforated, inflammation spreads beyond the appendix with possible abscess or generalized peritonitis. Chronic peritonitis, rare, <coughs> involving recurrent episodes of appendicitis with periods of resolution between attacks. Chronic appendicitis, rare, actually very rare, involving recurrent episodes of appendicitis with periods of resolution between attacks. Do we have complications? Of course do we do. If untreated, appendicitis can lead to serious complications, including perforation. The inflammated appendix may rupture, releasing infectious material plump into the peritoneal cavity, leading to generalized peritonitis. Huh? Ger generalized peritonitis. Generalized peritonitis. Oh, the life-threatening condition, life-threatening infection of the abdominal cavity, very dangerous condition, generalized peritonitis, and localized abscesses. If the bodies can localize the infection, an abscess may form. Then what complication can we have? Appendic appendiceal mass. If perforation is contained, it may form a phlegmon or a wall of, wall of collection of inflammatory tissue. Sepsis, yes, another huge problem. A systemic inflammatory response to infection that can result in multi-organ failure. Adhesions, adhesions. Scar tissue may form after surgery, potentially leading to bowel obstruction. No, potentially. About management. The mainstay of treatment is surgical removal of the appendix, so-called appendectomy which can be performed in two principal ways, laparoscopic and open. Laparoscopic appendectomy, of course, is a minimal invasive surgery involving small in incisions and the use of a lap with use of laparoscope. Advantages include quicker recovery, less postoperative pain and smaller scars, and less adhesions problem. Open appendectomy, a larger incision is made in the uh, RLQ, right lower, Quadrant to remove the appendix. This method is often used when there is a perforation or abscess formation. But we have a non-surgical treatment, may be considered in highly selected cases. Antibiotics, 
sometimes used in patients with uncomplicated appendicitis who are not candidates for surgery or when surgery is delayed. However, recurrence rates are high with non-surgical management. Actually, it, now it's uh, no out of topic. My beloved, uh, concerning absolutely surgical interventions are controversial. Now, times change. No, they don't answer in this manner, of course. Eh? Of course. About surgical considerations, my beloved. So, uh, history and physical examination. So, every doctor learn to recognize the learning, to recognize the signs and symptoms of appendicitis, though patient history and physical exam skills. That's yeah, through, not though. Huh? Learning to recognize the signs and symptoms to, uh, of appendicitis through patient history and physical exam skills. So, understanding diagnostic tools, being familiar with the use and interpretation of imaging and lab results. Indications for surgery, knowing when surgery is indicated versus when a conservative approach may be tried. So, example, for example, in cases of append appendicillus abscess, they will ask, you will ask in this manner, huh, my beloved. Perioperative care, understanding perioperative and postoperative care, including pain management, what else? Infection prevention and managing complications such as sepsis or abscess formation. Finally, laparoscopic versus open surgery. Understanding the differences between the two approaches, including indications, advantages, and risks. So, largely, largely, largely sufficient. My beloveds, for your good answer, excellent answer on your board, big exams. Uh, so, follow my U Dr. Y YouTube channel, follow not only the videos, but also follow the community of my channel in YouTube. And, beloveds, find three Telegram private channels that I have created for you, only for you, no, and for young doctors as also. So, you have to find private channels, you have to find Dr. Y, mm, you have to, my good advice. Find Dr. Y, surgery, this topic. Dr. Y, gynecology. Gynecology. Obstetrics and gynecology. And find Dr. Y, internal medicine. Find these channels in a telegram. Select start. Find your plan and enjoy. God bless you.